After several guests had complained about the water quality, the hotel had sent a worker up to inspect the water tanks. The body of a young woman was found in one of them. There's no time. No. O'clock. Hooray! It's time for another episode! Yeah, what, what episode is this, anyway? 83. God damn. You say that every week. I know. <laughs> when you get old, man, a week, it doesn't take long, man. It's just one right after the yeah. other, after the other. Closer right. and closer to the grave. Soon you die. I know. And we're this, so, this show is so cheerful. Yeah, we're recording on a Friday. And uh, we're not going out tonight, so we're just gonna drink in here. Yeah. Matter of fact, we're drinking right now. So we may get drunker and drunker. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> well, we don't usually do that because usually we record these in the afternoon. Yeah. Um. You know, the, like usually a day or two before I put them up. But I kind of wanted to get out of the way because we have a lot of stuff going on uh, yeah. this weekend, and I was like, well, I don't really have much time to record it. So Friday night, we're gonna record it Friday night. We're not going anyplace. Yeah. So. We just bought a big, huge thing of rum. and Yeah, we were, I said, man, I need some more rum. And we were passing by Sam's. And I said, I'm going to go in there and get some booze. And I was going to get uh, some Bacardi. And right next to it, they had that member's mark, yeah. which is in the same bottle. And the woman that worked there, I said, is that good? She goes, oh, yeah, I can't tell it from, from Bacardi. And it looked to be the same bottle. They probably buy it from the same distillery that yeah. makes it. So I bought it, man, it was good. It was like $12 for like a huge I cannot bottle. tell the difference between that and Bacardi. No, it's good. I'm, I got a nice mojito, and Jenny's got a double rum and coke. That's right. Yeah, and, and I'm drinking this mojito out of a damn mason jar. Because you're classy Because it's fun. fucking classy, man. <laughs> Shit's classy. It's like redneck class. <laughs> rednecks, rednecks judge class by size. Yeah, the it's, bigger it's it a is, quantity the, Yeah, the bigger it is, the more class it has. I'm seriously, I keep threatening to do this, but I was like, one year for your birthday or for Christmas, yeah. I'm totally getting you those mason jars with like the champagne glass yeah, bottoms. Yeah, bottoms on there. <laughs> Took too much room. That I saw at Walmart. They're not free, though. Well, they could when be. When they're free, they're even classier. <laughs> okay. They could be if I went in Walmart and was really sneaky. Okay, we got to do the show. Let's do the show. All right. So, let's do our usual shout outs. Um, yeah. My book, The Faceless Villain, obviously, uh, still out if you haven't got one yet. Get one. I think Faceless I... Faceless Villain kicking ass. I think I only... I might not have any free audio codes left. Okay. I might have one, but I'm kind of doubting it. Unseen Hand is still slamming, isn't it? Well, yeah, that still yeah. sells, too. Actually, okay. all my books still sell. Good. And Even like I the said, old ones are still going. Faceless Villain, Volume 2. Uh, I haven't had a chance to work on it this year. I'm actually on Chapter 8. She's doing a lot of contract work for a company to make packaging and stuff recently, so she's real busy. Yeah, so, yeah, that's all it is. And, right. you know, once that kind of... Uh, we can't loosens pass, up a little bit. She can't pass up those. Uh, that, well, yeah, that that's graphics. that's still yeah. what pays most of my bills, honestly. Right. So you know, and that's kind of this is my main client. I do a lot of their packaging work and stuff. Mm. So I've been doing that, but you know, I work on it whenever I get a chance to work on it, and I'm shooting for having it out by either before summer or early summer, like June or something like that. And because I want to have both of them out, I want to have both volumes out. I want to yeah. have like two out by June, and then. Volume three out by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. So I can have the trilogy. Oh, uh, we passed 2,000 subscribers. On YouTube. Yay. Yeah, on YouTube. Thanks, so that, you guys. that's pretty good. It's, it seems like we're getting like maybe close to 15 of them a day. You know? Yeah, that's good. Maybe it seems like it's speeding up a little bit. I think our footprint's a little bit bigger. But you guys, uh, you know, our, um, our regulars, like, share, subscribe. Help us grow. Yeah. Well, they've already subscribed. That's yeah, us, so, that's you know. true. <laughs> you haven't even drunk yeah. that much. Don't I get know. like that already. I'm getting high. I'm a, this might... No, my, my mind gets clearer, though, sometimes as I drink. It's like I focus. You <laughs> see it happen. Okay, let's go. Let's go. True. Let's, let's go on with it. Um, also, check out our latest movie review, which was Saturn 3, the forgotten 1980 sci-fi flick starring Kirk Douglas yeah. and his naked ass, yeah. as well as Farrah Fawcett and, 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 a, and a badass Harvey Keitel, Keitel, who was very young and not very well known at that stage. No, it's still a cool flick. I like it. it and, and you guys can watch it for free. It's on yeah. YouTube. I mean, it, it, like I said, it's not as good as the Blu-ray The Blu ray transfers. Also, and I think really I forgot good. to mention this on our retrospective, but you can totally uh, get to watch a naked Kirk Douglas trying to kill Harvey Keitel. Yeah, fighting butt-ass naked. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's kind of like Alien and Blade Runner's cheaper younger brother. 
That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's in the same universe. Yeah, probably. it's kind of the same. Yeah. Actually, I think I would like that. Someone should reboot that. So was so was but... Soldier with the Crustle. That was also in the same universe. People don't know that. Did I even see that movie? I'll buy it. Okay. Soldier. It's not that great, but it does have... Pro- oh, I remember. I it saw does... a recap of it. Yeah. Didn't uh, Brandon Cr- Tennell do a yeah. recap of that? It's got Crustle in it. I know I've seen parts of it. Yeah, Crustle's like a replicant soldier, kind of like Roy Batty. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Fair enough. And also, uh, just a reminder to check out our Patreon page if you haven't already, which is patreon.com slash 13 o'clock. Or if you don't like Patreon and would like to give a one-time donation through PayPal, then you can go to our blog, which is 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com. And there's a link in the sidebar to a PayPal account. Also, thank you and hi to our newest patron, Tara, Tara D. We also, we already have a Tara M, but Tara D... We actually she, know we her. We actually know her in yeah, person, yes. from the club. She yeah. lives here. Yeah, cool. I mean, I guess she still lives in the area. I haven't yeah. seen her out in a while, but yeah, so we so we know her and she loves our show. Yeah, cool. She's a rad chick. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> you know what I was thinking now? Johnny Shit Case? Yeah. You know from Shit Case Cinema? From Shit Case Cinema. He loves Crustle. I know. Yeah, he's got a man crush on Crustle, too. It's a universal phenomenon. It's yeah, it's a dude. It's seriously a dude thing. I don't know why, Dudes man. Dudes recognize the, it's, I don't the know why, man. I the do. the essential dudeness. Dudes of the are trying crustle. to you know enter into the crustle sphere. I guess so. Okay. Well, you and Johnny Shitcase. I know. He understands, <laughs> and he's and he's from England. Yeah, he's. And he yeah. understands. He understands the crustle sphere. I told you it's universal. The crustle yeah. sphere is universal. Yeah. Okay, so that's all the shout outs we have now. Okay, now before we get into our today, we're doing kind of a creepy, uh, sort of unsolved mysteries type of yeah. thing. Yeah, this is a weird one. Because we've had more than one request to do uh, Elisa Lam. Yeah. So we're going to do that on the second segment. And also, I wanted kind of another creepy mystery that I kind of find interesting, even though I'm sure that there's, you know, I'm sure that there's probably a yeah. completely rational explanation. Uh, the Flannan Isles Lighthouse Keepers. Yeah. So we'll get into that first. But before we do that. Yeah. News? Let's do our news story. News. It's news time. Now, here's a little news story that's been circulating uh, all over the place lately. And this actually kind of amuses the shit out of me. Okay. You know, those little... You know, your little personal assistants, your, you know, your Siri on your iPhone and your... Yeah. Uh, okay, so Amazon has the one that's Alexa. Yeah. And, you know, you've seen the commercials. You can ask it to do whatever. Well, evidently... You can ask it to do whatever? Well... Oh, shit. With, I'd abuse the fuck out with, of <laughs> Within limitations. Okay, all right. like, what would you ask it to do, mm-hmm. just out of curiosity? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk about you, it. You can't talk about no, it on a family show? It. Okay. It's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so this show's rated R. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, several people have been reporting that their little Alexa in their house will laugh for no reason. Oh shit! Like, at, can you imagine how creepy that would be? You're just kind of chilling in your house or whatever, and all yeah. of a sudden, like someone's laughing. And yeah, you I wouldn't like that. I'd no, have to turn I, that off. I wouldn't like that at all either. Yeah. Most of the people that have reported this, it's been all over Twitter, it's been all over Reddit, like people that have them, and they're saying that that they're not even asking it anything, but it just suddenly starts starts laughing out, laughing out, of, the blue. out nah, of the blue. I have to turn that off. That's what I hear. No, I, ain't play, I, I don't play that. Yeah, right. No. And sometimes it says it's in response to unrelated questions. One of the and this one article that I was reading about it had some really funny like uh, examples of tweets and stuff that people had put up about it. Um, someone wrote, "Lying in bed, about to fall asleep, when Alexa on my Amazon Echo Dot lets out a very loud and creepy laugh. There's a good yeah. chance I get murdered tonight." This Shit. person says. Damn. This other thing. This is my favorite. One person. I don't know if this was on Twitter or Reddit. But they said that Alexa started listing off local cemeteries and funeral homes unprompted. Man. <laughs> no, I, I would really have to turn that shit off. Yeah, well, I don't know why people that just turn it off. But so another person on Reddit I mean, said... I, I may be white, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm going to turn that shit off. <laughs> another person on Reddit said that Alexa refused to turn their lights off yeah. and then suddenly started laughing. I was trying to turn off some lights and they kept turning back on. They wrote, after the third request, Alexa stopped responding and instead did an evil laugh. Like, she's not turning your shit off. Do we have proof that this is That's what I mean. I don't know. This is just what people are reporting. They're good tales. I think these... That's what I mean. I think some of them might be... These sound like urban legends. Right. Some of them might be exaggerated. And then another person says, one person said Alexa wished her mother-in-law goodnight, saying, goodnight, Clarice. 
Oh, come on. My mother-in-law's name isn't Clarice, they said. (laughs) They just had to... They're making this shit up. Right. Okay, so now in response to what seem to be legitimate complaints, at least about the laughing, Amazon says, okay, well, it's probably doing that because Amazon is mishearing uh, something like a request that you're making as Alexa laugh. Mm -hmm. So they said what they're going to do... They want to change the the request that you have to make to get her to laugh to say, Alexa, can you laugh? Mm-hmm. And they said, and the response for that will be, sure, I can laugh, and then she'll laugh. Okay, yeah. So they're they hoping, right, so they're hoping not to get so many false positives where you're saying something and she interprets it as laugh and then she just laughs yeah. in a creepy fashion. Yeah, I don't like any of this shit. I, like. <laughs> I mean, I saw the demon seed. Right. Okay? I That's saw what I mean. Five, this... Or Saturn 3. I saw all that shit. Okay. Yeah, this is some like creepy. I don't want it. It's the artificial Saw intelligence. Blade Runner. Saw Blade it's becoming Runner. it's becoming sentient. Our yeah. I don't want assistance. It. I don't want it. Okay. I I hope all this shit happens after I die, not when I'm alive. I don't want it. I don't want any of that AI crap. Don't don't get me going. Don't get me started. Well, yeah, like I said, we you know if you haven't seen our review on Demon yeah. Seed, that is like the whole that is like artificial intelligence. Like that's like that's like Alexa run amok. She you just, see, like, shuts you in your house and tries to impregnate you and whatnot. You see, here's the thing. I know deep down that once computers become sentient, they're going to be better than us. Well, just, obviously. All right. So, so I don't want it They around. already are better than yeah, most people. <laughs> in certain ways, yeah. I just don't want those fuckers around, man. Well, yeah. I want to live in a world of people. I don't want to live in a world where there's computers getting rid of people. <laughs> and people helping computers get rid of people, which yeah. I think that might be going on. Like I said, it's like every sci-fi I, movie I think ever. It's, yeah, I think the captains of industry are making us obsolete. They're going to replace us with robots and, super, and AI supercomputers. Why? Because most people are pieces of shit. And I don't blame them. Although if I had the, all this power, I'd want to get rid of about half the people, too. Although the thing is, once but, AI becomes sufficient... But I'm bad, like, you know. I'm bad. I know I'm bad. You are. You're a terrible Yeah, person. those people think, you know, no, I don't know how to talk about it. <laughs> I've already but like that. I said, when, you know, once AI gets sufficiently advanced, then the AI robots are going to be pieces of shit, too, because they'll p- become more and more human. So I, after a I while, you're not going to be able to make a distinction anymore. So what's the point? I don't know. I don't want to talk Unless about you can just get like one that's like Roomba, it just vacuums. <laughs> that's cool. Like it'll just vacuum without you telling it to do it or clean shit or whatever. I don't want one that's like a person. That's freaky. That's what they're going to make. Gonna That's make... what I mean. And, we, and we've and we talked about this, too. Yeah. Since you said it's an R-rated show. We've talked about this, too, because, you know, everybody's, like, talking about sex bots, right? Yeah. That's going to be high on the list. I kind of feel like... Now, we, this might be just me, but I feel like sex bots would probably be better, and you've said this, too, if they didn't look... Human. Human. All right. Because there's still that uncanny valley thing that you have to get past, and they don't look quite right still. It's better if they were to keep them, make them look like a cute anime character slash Or like in Metropolis. Yeah, like Metropolis. That'd be rad. They have a bunch of light up parts, and they're neon, and they don't don't look realistic at all. Yeah. I kind of feel like that would be less unsettling. They should just look like pretty statues. Yeah. That's what they should look like. I, I don't really think they should be making anything that can pass for a human. Yeah, that's just that seems like a whole can of worms that does not need yeah, to be opened. That, that's I think of, I think they will make that up. I think they will make that illegal. Actually, it would that would probably be a wise move. Yeah, I that's probably think. what they would do. Yeah, I mean and that's then, what I would do if I was. In and charge. then you know I think they're gonna make these damn sex bots. They'll they'll put rules on that. Yeah, like they they can't be sentient, and they you yeah know, because that would suck. Yeah. For the robot. Then you're having then you're having relationship problems with the fucking right. Sex and bot. I think that's the whole point of why people want sex right. bots in the first it's, place. You they know, just want no something that, you know, it's like a vibrator except it looks like a person kind yeah. of. And maybe and then, and then it comes after your ass. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. So Alexa is not evidently possessed by demons, and Amazon yeah. is working on fixing it. But like I said. Skynet is coming soon enough. We don't want to rush yeah. that along. Okay, so let's get into one of our main little mysteries. I want to do uh, the Flannan Isles Lighthouse oh, mystery that one, yeah. first yeah, okay. because I want to do a Lisa Lamb, but I feel like there's a lot more uh, detail on that one. So yeah. I want to kind of save that and one I've for the seen last some segment. Of the, I've, seen some, I've seen the evidence on the Lisa Lamb stuff, so I, yeah. I, have, I have a pretty good grasp. And there's a lot of interesting shit going on with it, not only about her death, but you yeah. know about the hotel and about kind of other shit that happened there. Now, the Lighthouse case, you've written about this, I think, haven't you? 
Uh, not that I recall. This okay. is just something that I've, I've, I've always loved. Because remember a while ago we did we a show. We talked about this one time. We were walking and it had something yeah. to, you were going to gonna write a book and maybe this had been one of the cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that's, that's probably what it was. was. Right. Well, I've always kind of been fascinated. Because remember we did that show about ghost ships and sea monsters and stuff. I yeah. love all that kind of like old oh. creepy sea lore and oh. stuff like that. I forgot something. What's that? I think I'm going to tell the audience this. What? Remember PBS contacted me about Mammoth Mountain. Yeah, that's right. Before we get off into this, PBS has been approaching me to do this thing. It's like this radio show where they take an interview of me talking about Mammoth Mountain, and then they place it over music, and they use it kind of like a radio show. Okay, I gotcha. And I have to go to the studio to record this. They're gonna yeah, because they probably it. don't want like shitty Skype no, no, on my be. laptop. So what they want me to do is they want me to go to one of these local radio stations that they have like an, as an affiliate, and then they're going to... You know, do an interview with me over the phone, but then of course they're going to record me in studio quality. I haven't really talked about like the money or anything yet, but I just told him, I said, look, you can't deviate from the story. You well, know, if they're just going to have I you talking want... about it, right. then that would be good because then right. they can't really, you yeah. know, they they can't embellish it if you're not right. embellishing it. You know, and I think I think people know that you know I, I kind of I talked to a haunting. But the haunting kind of came at me sideways, that program. They came at me sideways about, well, you know, technically, according to your story, this isn't really a ghost. And because we're on Destination America, and it's kind of a ghost. And well, they I'm specifically really said it didn't really fit their formula right. for the show. And I kind of felt like they wanted me to change. Yeah, I think they were kind of like trying to massage you and into I'm changing not do some that, of the details. And I got too much integrity. Well, yeah. like I said, and we said that when we wrote the book, it's like you told it exactly how you remembered yeah. it happening. Yeah. And, and that's how I wrote it. I'm not gonna, make it. I'm not going to make it into a story that it's not just to make a few bucks. Right. Fuck them. You know what I mean? I don't need the money. Yeah. I now know if I want to come to me with a million dollars. I mean, you know. Well, then you might think about <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I'll change whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> no. Well, I would do for a million dollars because I can retire on that shit. Well, you know, just, that's what they did with Amityville. Yeah. But even though I think that may have been kind of fabricated from the very beginning, I'm, you know, you, me and you weren't really into this for that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Well, I just wanted to write it because I thought the story was an interesting story. And it was unlike one that I had heard yeah. before. I didn't think I was going to make any money off it. Right. I just thought it was an interesting story that I wanted to We still to haven't really made any money on it per se. Not we, much. We're I making mean, money. You but... know, I make a little bit when the when the books sell, like when the audio yeah. books sell, but it's not a shit ton. I mean, no. the book isn't that expensive. Now, if anybody ever came at me with an offer, it would have to be a good offer, and it would have to stick to the story. I'm not going to compromise. I don't blame you. Or I, in the contract, I said, look, you can do whatever you want with the story, but when I go out and fucking on tour and I talk about the case, I can going to call bullshit and say that's sensationalized. And if they yeah. just give me permission to do that, because they can say can. it was based on a story. Yeah. Because yeah. they do that do with that. a lot of paranormal yeah. stories. Like, they just, like, go crazy and do all yeah. kind of crazy shit with it. Like they did with The Conjuring 2 with the Enfield case. I right. mean, that's wildly exaggerated from what actually happened. Yeah. Well, but anyway. I'm still waiting for them to tell me what studio to report to. Yeah. That'll be time. good, though. I think that'll we'll be see. cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. All right. So, let's get back to talking about the Flannan Isles Lighthouse. Now, this is a very, very famous unsolved disappearance not just one disappearance but three it was three men that disappeared yeah this happened in 1900 it's a weird case man it's a weird it, case. it is pretty weird like i'm sure that there's a completely mundane explanation but there's a lot of weird little details in it you know what i mean these two cases we're talking about are good examples of how evidence left behind can look really fucking weird even, oh yeah even if the explanation for what happened may have been mundane yeah the evidence left behind might lead you to certain conclusions that are like... And like I said, in that way, these are very much like the Dyatlov Pass uh, case and stuff like that, where I'm sure it was probably just some, you know, freak accident or some kind of tragic thing like that. But the way that the things looked when they were left behind made everything look way more mysterious than it was. And that's probably the case here but you know but these two do have kind of strange details about them that i yeah. think is why they're still they capture the right. public imagination so, so f- much so for any of so if we if we have any new listeners in the audience okay we don't we're not really gonna bullshit you we're just gonna tell you we're gonna give you the the ins and outs of this case we're not gonna try to lead you to anything that you know we're not gonna sensationalize you know what i mean 
Yeah. And the thing is, like I said, I don't think I'm, I'm going to probably discuss like, you know, other people that have put forward, uh, you know, paranormal or conspiratorial theories about stuff that happened here, just because I think they're interesting or amusing. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're true. I think the, both these cases probably have completely mundane explanations, right. but it, but they are interesting just because of the weirdness of the stuff that was yeah, and, and we got a lot of people out there that, of course, they got their earbuds on or their earphones on. They're trying to go to sleep because they're already in the comment section saying that we're giving them nightmares. That last yes. one, we had somebody saying, man, I fell asleep. Sorry, man, talking. but not really because that's that's awesome. Yeah, I fell asleep. We were talking about that serial killer had the fucking worst dream ever. <laughs> Some it's about the Fox Hollow Park. Yeah, episode. Fox Hollow Park. <laughs> Some of these youngsters come in, they go, man, this is taking them too long. Where's the information? You know, this isn't, we're not the ADD generation and we have people commuting to work. And we have people going to sleep listening to this. So, you know, this is entertainment, but it's factual, strange entertainment. Possibly paranormal. We'll see. These two, I don't think so, though. No. Plus, but they're weird. These are very weird. These are weird, yeah. Ready? Look at her. She's sitting there. She's drinking that. Well, like, hey, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do a drunken episode, we're Ah. going to do a drunken episode. I'm about about halfway there. Yeah. Look at that fucking thing. Well, yeah. He has a really, really large... um, Mojito. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm in Florida, damn it. We're going to fucking drink a mojito. Yeah, that's good. If you guys uh, have the ability to make a mojito at your location, proceed. Make a mojito. <laughs> you, you have Tom's permission. Yeah, they're fantastic. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the Flannan Isles are um, a series of islands in the Outer Hebrides off of Scotland. Um, the one island where this took place is called, and I'm sure I'm messing this up, Eileanmore. It's uh, Gaelic. You're right. It just means big island, pretty much. Okay. So, yeah. So that's the uh, the island where it took place. Now, this happened in December of 1900. Now, the lighthouse on this island was actually only built about a year before. So it was a new lighthouse. Uh, it still stands there to this day, as far as I know. There were no other inhabitants on the island uh, except for the lighthouse keepers. Um, the only other man-made structure that's there is like a really old chapel that was built like like St. Flannan for, you know, like in the fucking 7th century or something and this like is that. 1900? 1900 so? this happened, yeah. yeah. How big is this place, do you know? Uh, about 39 acres, the That's island. Tiny. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, there's pictures of it all over Google. It yeah. looks like a beautiful island. It's kind of barren. It's, you yeah. know, just grass and then it's all rocky cliffs and stuff. Back in the day before GPS, you had to have a motherfucker out there in a building with a damn light. Yeah, they're all uh, automated nowadays, yeah, which right. is better because it's not, you know, right. you don't this kind of shit there. happening. Right. But um, if you look at pictures of it that are taken from like helicopters or drones or whatever, you can pretty much see the whole thing like mm-hmm. in one shot. Okay, so the first sign that something was amiss. Uh, took place on the 15th of December. There was a steamer ship called the Arctor or the Archtor, and it was going from Philadelphia to Leith in Scotland. And they put in their log that the little lighthouse on the on the Flannan Isles lighthouse mm-hmm. was not lit, which to them was unusual. So they right. logged it. Uh, the weather conditions were kind of poor, but they could see that it wasn't on. So they got to Leith on 18th of December and they reported it, but really nothing was kind of done about it yet. All right. So uh, they were actually going to go out and check, but then the weather was super shitty and they couldn't get out there. So finally, uh, the relief vessel called the Hesperus, they got to the island um, the day after Christmas, December 26th. And this ship contained the relief lighthouse keeper. He was one of the ones that was going to switch out with one of the guys that was on the island. The three guys that were supposed to be in the lighthouse were named Thomas Marshall, James Duckett, and Donald MacArthur. So this fourth man that they were bringing, he was like the rotating guy. So the relief ship gets to the island. They pull up to the little the little dock or the little, uh, you know, area there. Now, the flagstaff there had no flag on it. The little provision boxes that, you know, people dropped off stuff in were not there. And none of the lighthouse keepers had come out to mm. greet the ship, which was strange. Right. So the captain of the ship, uh, whose name was... Jim Harvey, he blew the horn and stuff, and then he set up a flare and all this other stuff, and nobody came out. 
So they thought that was pretty creepy. So Joseph Moore, who was the relief keeper, he gets in the little boat and he rides up to the shore. And if you look, like I said, the lighthouse is still there. And there's this really big, long stone staircase that goes all the way down to the little loading dock or whatever. So he went up by himself and he gets up and he said while he was walking up those long steps, like he felt a really creepy feeling, like foreboding, he said, quote unquote, because he knew some bad shit was was happening. So he gets to the lighthouse. Inside, now here is where accounts start to differ. I think a lot of the mysteriousness of this case came about because some details that got added later. So some accounts say that he gets to the lighthouse, he finds the door and the gate closed and locked, but inside the table is full of like half-eaten food, like they were in the middle of a meal. One of the... Chairs is overturned. Uh, The door to the actual house is open, even though the outer door and the gate were closed. And there are two of the oilskin coats that the guys wore when they went out in the weather were gone, but one of them was still there, meaning one guy must have gone out without without his his coat. coat on. So other than that, they find the logbook. The last log entry was made on the 15th of December, and nothing seemed to be amiss. Like there was nothing unusual noted. Now, there were, there had been, the weird thing about this is that some accounts say that a few days prior, that one of the keepers had noted in the log that there'd been a terrible storm of the likes that they had never seen before. And these were like seasoned seafaring guys, you know, they didn't just cry about one little storm. Or they have hurricanes like that. or typhoons down over there. Near you know the what? Coast. I don't know. It seems too far north because it feels right, like the yeah. water's too cold for that yeah, kind that's of what shit. I thought. But, um, you know, they do have shitty weather right, okay. now and again. Just but, a bad storm. Yeah, but he said it was like the worst storm they'd ever seen and that one of the guys was praying and crying, which seems weird. I mean, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. They were up in the lighthouse, which is very far up on the island. So, you mm. know, they, it's not like they're going to get washed off or anything <laughs> like that from up where they were. They're like 100 something feet above sea level, 150 feet. So the weird thing, though, is that the bad weather seemed to have passed by the 15th, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when they made the log in the book, they were like, you know, the storm passed, it's fine, blah, blah, blah. So it wasn't a case of, oh, well, they just got washed away in a storm or whatever, because apparently the bad weather had passed by then. Right. However, when the when um, the relief guy came and the ship and everything, and they were looking around for these guys and they couldn't figure out where they went, they did note, even though there was nothing that weird in the lighthouse... Down by the west landing, there was considerable storm damage. Well, it looked like storm damage. They're like, even the, like the iron uh, railing was bent, you mm. know, significantly. Yeah. Um, a large rock, which weighed like more than a ton, had come unmoored and had come off and smashed on the rocks below. There was a box that was kept like 108 feet above the shoreline that it had rope and stuff in it. And that was broken and there were ropes everywhere and stuff. So clearly, you know, the storm had done some damage. But like I said, the storms had passed yeah. and the guys were still alive, evidently. And there was still food, right, in the cabin. Yeah. So that means it wasn't a rogue wave. Or Although like the thing, here's the thing, though, the part it, and this is a pretty common detail. I watched a bunch of documentaries about this and read a bunch of different uh, accounts of it. About 70 percent of the accounts repeat the half eaten meal on the table yeah. thing. Okay, well, that was not the case. No. That actually only came about because about 12 years after this incident, there was a very famous poem written by a guy named uh, Wilhelm Gibson, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a very famous poem called Flannan Isle. And in it, he had um, the detail that there were half-eaten plates of food on the table and stuff like that. But apparently that was not the case. Okay, so 13 o'clock is going ahead. They're throwing truth down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> We're getting down to the bottom of the happy meal. I couldn't meal. That's determine not... whether the chair being overturned, mm-hmm. that did seem to be the case, that there okay. did seem to be one chair, but but evidently the dishes were washed and put away. Okay. The beds had not been and slept based, in. based on your research, there wasn't any kind of rogue wave. Or the, the water well, see, did not go up and get anybody. Not out of up, the lighthouse, no. The lighthouse. Because okay. the lighthouse, and like I said, I'll put okay. pictures in the YouTube video. If you see right. a picture of the Flannan Isles lighthouse, yeah. it is very far okay. from, right. it's up so, on a peak. So you can put that out of the equation. Right. right. However... What they think might have happened. I mean, obviously, because over Can the I ask years. Can one more thing? Sure. Go. Did they have 
their own boat, like a little dinghy or a fishing boat or anything on this island? I don't think they did. I've okay. never seen anyone mention that. Okay. They probably didn't. All right. Now, here's the thing. As as crazy as all the different theories, there's a bunch of different crazy theories, obviously. Yeah. The poem that I mentioned earlier actually took the relief keeper that came. He apparently made kind of an offhand comment about when he came up on the island, he saw these three really weird black birds and they were looking at him, no, and then they no. flew up. And it's a, but the poet liked that detail, so, so he put, he put that, in. that in there. Now, in the poem, right. uh, you know, the guys had turned into ghosts, or the ghosts had come to get them. Now, the thing about the island, about this particular island, is that evidently it has a very long history of people being superstitious about it. Yeah. Uh, it's supposedly haunted. Yeah. They call it the Phantoms of the Seven Hunters because the islands, the, those particular islands are called the Seven Hunters. So, you know, there's a lot of legends about ghosts, about little people living on it, okay. things, things of that nature. But this disappearance case is an actual occurrence in history. Yes. So we know that this case actually did happen. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now some people have said, well, maybe they were taken by, uh, yeah. well, obviously some people said aliens. Yeah, but what, some are people, all, what are all the crazy explanations? That's what I'm saying. The Go crazy ahead. ones, like yeah. I said, ghosts. Okay. Taken by a sea monster or all a right. giant seabird. Okay. Kidnapped by aliens. That's a more recent one. All right. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? A little less crazy. Maybe they were abducted by foreign spies or pirates. Uh, although there was really no, not much sign of violence. What about murders? Any idea of them making murder? Now, yeah, and that's another one that some okay. people say either someone came by and murdered them or one of them went nuts and murdered the other two right. and then jumped into the sea as a suicide. What are the plausible ones? The most plausible one to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I the murder-suicide su one, does that's not terribly crazy. It has happened before. There was actually a lighthouse in mm -hmm. Wales. Uh, that had two or three keepers, I can't remember, and one of them did go batshit from isolation and killed the other one. So it does happen occasionally. But they didn't, like I said, they didn't really find any evidence of that. What most people think probably happened to them was that one of the lighthouse keepers, evidently, the year before this happened, he had been fined five shillings because he had failed to secure some piece of equipment or something like that. So what they think might have happened was out on the West Landing where all this damage was, like there was a crane there and there was all this other kind of like ropes and kind of stuff. They think that maybe in this bad storm that came by, maybe something came unsecured and he was like, oh, well, shit, we have to go fix that because I got in trouble for that before. Mm -hmm. So him and the other guy, him and one of the other guys put on their coats and went out to try to secure it. Now, see, the rules say all three guys can't be out of the lighthouse at once. Right. Two of them can go. One of them's got to stay in there. You're not allowed. And it's like, especially they can't leave after dark. Right. right? So they think what might have happened was the two guys, they put their coats on. I don't know if it was during the storm or after the storm had passed. Right. They said, you know, we're going to go out there and secure that because I don't want to get in trouble again. I want to get another fine because five right. shillings back then was quite a bit of money. Now, they think what might have happened was that while these two guys were out there trying to secure whatever the equipment was, a rogue wave came mm -hmm. and swept them both away. Now, it's theorized that the third guy who was still in the lighthouse and didn't have his coat on either saw the rogue wave coming or heard them yelling and just ran out mm -hmm. without putting his coat on. I mean, it was freezing cold, but right. you know what I mean? But if he if he heard them yelling or if he saw a big right. wave coming, he thought he'd run out and warn them. And apparently he didn't make it in time or he was trying to help them and he fell in too. That seems to be the most plausible scenario. It seems weird to me that their bodies never washed ashore because they said the way the water currents are and stuff. And if, like I said, if you see pictures, it's like just a bunch of little islands, like kind of close together. You'd think the bodies would have washed up somewhere. So far they haven't. Could have been they got eaten by sharks. Who knows? But like, I feel like that's probably the most probable. Were they all strong swimmers? I don't know. So that detail isn't there? No. Okay. Now, the thing is, like I said, by the 15th, when they presumed that they disappeared, because the last, that's when the last log was from, was from the 15th, and everything seemed to be fine. Um, you know, the storms had passed and stuff like that. So I kind of feel like 
rogue wave, maybe. It does seem odd because these guys were, you know, like I said, seasoned lighthouse keepers, seasoned, you know, seafarers. You'd think that it would be difficult for them to be, like, surprised by a big wave coming, but it could happen if they weren't really paying attention. It might have been a freak accident. Um, I have seen some people who uh, kind of specialize in this sort of thing, and it's like the way the island is... They have like all these little caves and stuff like that underneath Mm -hmm. uh, where the cliffs are that might have made like if a wave hit it a particular way, it would suck in and then suck back out and make like this big kind of thing. Because, okay, there's no way that they could have got swept out of the lighthouse because like I said, the, the lighthouse wasn't wet. You right. know, there was no, there okay. was no damage no to the water lighthouse. Damage to the lighthouse. No, the only damage was like right on the side of the cliff where the landing was, where right. some of their equipment was on that side of the island. Yeah. So I kind of feel like it had to be something and it must have been some kind of like freak sudden accident because I feel like the third guy probably ran out without his coat on. Yeah. Because that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Because of the, the way I'm seeing it, the way I'm seeing it, one guy ended up in the water somehow. There was another guy there to help him. Yeah. The third guy in the lighthouse ran down to help the second guy. And somehow they all ended up in the water. That's kind of what I'm feeling and Once like. they're all in the water, for one reason or another, they drowned. Now, it could be that two men went into the water. The third man ran down there to save him, and he was also taken into the water. Yeah. Now, that's very, very general. In the water, taken into the water. Well, a lot of different things can happen around docks. You know, with the ocean. Well, yeah. That's what I mean. You never know. And it's like, and even though, you know, there were no reports of bad weather in the area at all on the 15th. So people are like, well, rogue wave, where did that come from if there was no storm? Right. But it does happen. It seems, you know, yeah, it's a freakish occurrence. Whatever happened, it would have made sense if you were there and you saw it. Well, yeah, that's kind of true. It was one of those kind of situations. There's a guy named John Love who wrote A Natural History of Lighthouses, and he kind of discusses a little bit of this uh, case in his book, and he's pretty much, you know, anybody that has ever been a lighthouse keeper or a seafarer in this part of the world, to them it would not seem mysterious. Right. Because they're like, this shit, this kind of shit happens all the time. Yeah, one thing leads to another and all dudes get killed. (laughs) Right. And it's like, yeah, it's weird that their bodies didn't wash up. Yeah, that's weird. But it's like shit happens there's big there's animals in the ocean that could eat you it's like mm-hmm. who knows where they ended up somebody slipped and fell into the water during a storm that's yeah. what i think that's what i think started it and then somebody else tried to get him out maybe he ended up in the water and yeah. the third man ran down there to try to get them both out of the water and because of the storm and the wind they all ended up in the water and drowned yeah i think that i kind of think that's probably what happened too and like i said this guy that wrote this book about lighthouses he pretty much believes the exact same thing. Yeah. He says, uh, and this is a quote, there's no need to invoke the sinister or the paranormal. It was purely a tragic act of nature. The men got swept away by abnormally rough seas. Since it was not permitted for all three to abandon the lighthouse, only two of the men must have gone down to the landing to secure the gear. Yeah. The third, Donald MacArthur, who was right. also called the occasional, would have remained back in the lighthouse, but when his companions did not return, he would have been concerned for their safety, or else perhaps he saw a great wave approach and rushed to warn them. MacArthur may have been too late, only then to be swept away himself. Yeah, that sounds that sounds. Likely. And then he goes on to say that the keepers at the newly built lighthouse, this lighthouse had only been here for a year, remember? Yeah. He said they might not have been familiar with the winter storm conditions yeah. around that particular right. island because this was probably their first uh, go around. Yeah. Because I think... At the time, and I'm not sure if this was, uh, you know, standard across the the mm-hmm. field or whatever, but I think they were there in, it was th- always three guys, and they had a rotating fourth guy, and they would be there for two or three weeks at a time, yeah. and then they would switch everyone out, and I'm, you were just there 24-7. I'm going to call back to an earlier show. I'm going to give the audience some advice. Do not fuck with that water. Okay. Do not fuck <laughs> Stay with, out of the stay ocean. Stay out of the water. I am ex-infantry, 101st Airborne Division. I, you couldn't get me near that water. I had relatives that were submariners back in the fucking 60s. I would never get in a submarine, especially like a nineteen or a World War II sub. No, fuck that. The water is bad. I would rather jump out of a helicopter or an airplane. The sky is cool. The ground is cool. Water, bad. Don't believe me? Just watch I Shouldn't Be Alive. Yeah. And then you will find out That how bad. soured me on going yeah, out the ocean forever. Not going to the water. Not that I was super excited about doing it before, but seeing no. that show... 
yeah. was pretty much and pretty much every episode of that show. I mean, other yeah. than the ones where they were just like hiking and broke their leg and got eaten by mountain lions or whatever. The shit that happened. All the ones that are on the ocean. It's the always worst. some family, and they're like, "Look, we finally Bar saved enough yacht. money to buy a yacht and sail yeah. around the world. It's our dream." And then they're out for two days, and they mm-hmm. get you know disabled by pirates, or they hit a rock or something like that. What about that sharks guy? Sharks are circling around. What about that guy that, that was in that emergency inflatable? That's craft right. And he was in there a two long month, time. two or three God. months, trying to survive. I can't believe that dude lived drinking his own piss, trying to fish off of a little bucket. No, no, yeah, it was he, like a raft. A, a, a little, little raft, raft with a little tent with top a little on tent it. over it, and then the other people that were in that little raft that didn't have a tent and they baked to death and they fucking died of high dehydration. People jumping into the water to feed themselves to the sharks during those hallucinations. Yeah. No, uh, uh-uh. no, nope. yeah, no, no, thank, thank you. you. I I could think of a lot no, better, thank you. more pleasant ways to go. No, nope. thank you. <laughs> I, I, I was in infantry in fucking Korea along the DMZ, forty and fifty degrees below zero. I'd rather be in freezing cold. Siberian weather than to be stranded on the surface of the ocean. Water, water everywhere, <laughs> and not a drop to drink. Okay. <laughs> Fuck that. I agree. Yeah. Oh. I didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it. He's like he's shivering over here. I didn't want to talk about it. Because I have personal experience with survival situations, and I can imagine how bad that would be. No, thank you. Do you know what my worst nightmare would be? What was that? It would be, like, because I'm scared to death of flying in planes. Mm-hmm. Okay? So my worst... I love it. Helicopters well, with Well, I, I know you love it, but I really I really don't like uh, flying, flying in planes. I get, And I don't get stressed flying, out about a lot of stuff. Flying motorcycles, jumping out of things. I don't get stressed out about a lot of stuff like that, but I do not like flying. I do not like heights. So my worst nightmare would be... Being in a plane crash, and then the plane crashing into the ocean, and then I live. Yeah, right. And then I'm floating there in By the yourself. middle of the ocean. By yourself, on debris. Yes. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, man. Just, uh, seriously, if I'm, I'm one or the other of those things, I just want to die right away, because fuck that shit. Now, second story, right? Yeah, but we got to do commercials first. Okay, commercials. Look at, he's drunk already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'm holding it together. <laughs> You're it's just the beginning together. of the night. <laughs> It's not even 8 o'clock yet. I know, right? I know. Yeah, it was the fun's just beginning. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have such a headache tomorrow. Yeah. That's all right. All right, so we got to take a break right now. So when we get back, we will talk about the creepy and mysterious case of Elisa Lamb. Damn. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about the story of Elisa Lam, kind of an internet sensation. Yeah. I um, remember when it happened. It was weird. Well, yeah. I, I think probably, I mean, it's not only like the weird details of the case, but I think the thing that made this 
was the video so famous edits. was the video the yeah, elevator video, video yeah. weird which is creepy yeah and well it's always creepy to see video footage of someone right before you know they died yeah like that's always like really unsettling to me yeah. but then the fact that she was acting so weird and the circumstances of her death were so weird mm -hmm. so i can see why this kind of uh took on such a mythical quality yeah. and it's kind of a shame because actually on youtube and it's available for free if you want to watch it i used a little clip of it at the beginning of our youtube video this girl at uh, the paranormal scholar i believe is the name of the channel and she made an hour-long video called Elisa, the documentary. And it was actually very good because it delved a lot more into Elisa as a person. Because I kind of feel like her humanity kind of got lost a little bit just in the whole, look how weird this video is and look how weird her death was. And it's kind of sad that you forget that she was like an actual person. So I liked that this documentary went a little bit into her past read from her uh, various blog posts and things like that. So you could get an idea of her as a person and not just as this weird... Weird internet, case. Yeah, like, like a weird a internet case. creepy case. Yeah. Right, yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool. And it's a good, it's a pretty good documentary. I recommend it. All right. So probably most of you know the details of this case, but Elisa Lamb was actually... She'd been a college student. Uh, she was from Vancouver. And she was actually kind of on a little vacation. She called it her West Coast tour on her blog. Uh, she was just going around California by herself, having a good time, taking a bus or whatever, doing various things, staying here and there. She went to the San Diego Zoo. She was, you know, just trying to meet people and stuff like that. Now, at some point, she took a room at the rather infamous Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah. Now, the Cecil Hotel, back in the day, like back in the 20s and 30s, it was actually very glamorous. It's very big. And like the yeah. inside of it is actually still pretty cool looking. It's kind of art deco. But, you know, in the ensuing years, it's... It's a flop house. Yeah, it's kind of a flop house. Yeah. Uh, it's right near Skid Row. Yeah. It's, you know, there's a lot of homeless people. I mean, a lot of the hotels in that area have uh, kind of gone downhill in that way. Yeah. So she was staying there because it was cheap. So evidently, at some stage, she was supposed to check out of the hotel, I believe on January 31st. And because she didn't check out and they couldn't find her when she went in the room, so it was reported to the police... Uh, you know, that this girl was missing. Yeah. Now, they actually did not find her for quite a while. I think it was about three weeks. Yeah. And, yeah, this is, this is, this is pretty shit. horrible. This is pretty bad, yeah. so, th so they had the missing case. You know, she, they had posters of her all over the place, like people looking for her and stuff like that. Her parents were, of course, frantic. She had been talking to them every day on the phone on her vacation, and they just wondered what had happened to her. So then people that were staying at the hotel started reporting that... The water, uh, you know, in their showers and their Dang. sinks, yeah, Damn. it starts smelling really funny. Damn. It tasted really bad. Oh, um, you know, they, they would run the sink and it would be black before and then it would go nasty, clear and stuff nasty. like that. Damn. So finally, they got a maintenance worker to go check out what the problem was. And they opened one of the four water tanks on the roof of the hotel and oh, found Elisa Lamb's man. decomposed body. Yeah, she'd been in the damn bowl drinking water for weeks. For three weeks, yeah. God damn. Those poor people drinking that shit, too. Yeah, and the, and like I said, the hotel didn't know for yeah. quite a long time. I mean, once they did find out, fair play to them, yeah. they actually paid to move people to other hotels, or they said, if you want to stay, you sign a waiver, we'll give you drinking water, you know, we'll give you bottled God. water or whatever. Yeah. You know, they did go under some lawsuits. Actually, I think even Elisa Lamb's parents sued them at one point. Right. Um, just because they thought it was negligent, like how could she get up to the roof right, and all this yeah. other stuff. I don't think, I think the case was either dismissed or they lost mm -hmm. because the hotel was like, well, how could we possibly have known that they found her ass in the water supply? In the, yeah. 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 Jesus. So shortly after her body was found, the LAPD released what was apparently the last known footage of her. Yeah, and it's weird. It's pretty weird. Yeah. It was taken uh, from an elevator security camera a little bit past midnight on the day before she presumably died. In this video, like the beginning of it doesn't seem super weird because it just seems like she gets in the elevator. She pushes. I can't tell like it's, it, you know, it's not the greatest quality. You can't tell if she pushes one button or a bunch of buttons. Mm. And then she stands back and the door doesn't close. So then she kind of runs up and she like peeks out in the hall, almost as if she's going like, is somebody out there pushing the button, like keeping the door from closing? But then she comes back in the elevator and then she like hides in the corner. Then she starts pushing the buttons again. 
Then she goes out into the hall and starts like gesticulating or as though she's talking to someone. Mm -hmm. And then she makes like these weird, like she steps sideways, steps sideways, and then steps back into the elevator. And the weird thing too, is that the elevator, even though, even when she's standing in there for a long time, the fucking door doesn't close. Like, I don't, like I said, at first I didn't think it was weird because she was probably like, what the fuck? Why isn't the door, why isn't the door closing? This elevator's broken. But then after that, she starts behaving very strangely. So because of that video, I mean, th- that video went fucking viral. Everyone was sharing that. It's like, look at this weird shit. And then they found her dead up in the water tank. How did she get up there? Yeah. Did someone murder her? Did she commit suicide? What the fuck is going on? So this is another one where there's some pretty plausible scenarios. And then there's some crazy batshit insane scenarios. But the investigation into her death, oddly enough, the autopsy report was not released until about four months after they found her body, which is strange because usually they release it as soon as it's done. So a lot of people thought that was a little funny. Another funny thing about the autopsy report was that at first, uh, the coroner had marked accident, the accident box. Yeah. Three days later, somebody else had marked the undetermined box and then they had signed and dated it. Yeah. And then a couple days after that, somebody crossed that out and then remarked accident. Yeah. So that seemed a little strange. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I can kind of see what you're talking about. Now, the autopsy report showed, I mean, her body was very decomposed. She'd been in the water for three weeks. Yeah. I know. Sorry. Damn. I know. Sorry. I know how sensitive you are. I've seen photographs of what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I have as well. I'm imagining, you know, not her, but I've seen other people. In that condition, In the yeah. water for that amount of time. And just, I can't imagine people drinking that water. Fuck. That's and not crazy. knowing. That's yeah. like, that's terrible. So boy, this water sure does taste bad. You know what I mean? And they're making coffee with it. Mix, mix and drink. Oh. Although you'd think that it would smell bad enough that you'd be like, yeah, let's go get some bottled water. But yeah. you'd still have to shower it. Yeah, then the shower in it. But yeah, I know. It's terrible. Okay. So the autopsy report showed, like I said, she was very decomposed. They, it showed that there wasn't, there weren't any obvious signs of sexual assault or violence, although there was some strange uh, blood pooling around the anal area, which might have been rape, but maybe not. It could have just been from the decomposition. They're not Water. really sure. She had a minuscule amount of alcohol in her system, like not enough to be even tipsy. The only other drugs found in her system were her prescription medications. Yeah, let's get into this. What because were, what she was... she suffered from uh, bipolar disorder and had yeah. struggled with depression and things like that. So she was on four different uh, psychiatric medications and had been taking them for quite a while. Her her mental illness was apparently rather well under control. Four she, different medications? Yeah. Well, some of them had to counteract the other ones is yeah. what, you know what I mean? It's like, like one of they, them is an antidepressant. One of them is an antipsychotic. Why do they do that to people? Man? I don't know. But okay. yeah, she, but she had apparently been having some problems. And like I said, as far as I know, like when this, uh, the documentary, Elisa, the documentary, she actually, when she made this, which was about a year ago, all of Elisa Lamb's, uh, blogs and things like that were still online, which they probably still are if you want to look in the Wayback Machine or, you know, they might still be online or whatever if you want to read them. Yeah. But she talked a lot and very frankly about her depression and things like that. But the weird thing is that in the year or two before she died, she actually seemed much better. She didn't actually really seem to, that depressed anymore. She seemed a lot more positive, a lot more hopeful. Yeah. Because at first people were like, well, she probably just went up on the roof and committed suicide But that didn't seem quite, uh, you know, it seemed like people that had seen her, she had just talked to her parents the day before. They said there was nothing weird. Um, She had been to a bookstore the day before she died and had talked to the lady that owned it. And the lady said, you know, she bought a bunch of books and CDs and stuff. And she said, oh, I'm going to send them to my family back home. And, you know, do you, I wonder if they'll all fit in my luggage, like, so I could take them back and all this other stuff. So she was buying gifts for her family. So what are the theories? So the first theory is that she simply climbed up. She simply had some kind of manic episode and climbed up to the roof and committed suicide in the weirdest, most convoluted way possible. Yeah. Uh, There's also... Uh, a theory that she was murdered. Okay. And I'll get into that a little bit in a minute too, because the Cecil Hotel apparently, like I said, has a reputation. And mm-hmm. even when Elisa Lamb died, uh, there were three different registered sex offenders staying there. Mm-hmm. So it's possible she could have been murdered. You know, some of the weirder theories were that 
I love this one. She had apparently posted something about, like on her blog, about an invisibility cloak. <laughs> okay. it, well, because there was, um, you know how they've been working on the invisibility cloak technology? Yeah, yeah. And there was like some company that had made one and it was actually pretty good and there was like yeah. a picture of it. And she had posted about it a couple days before that. Okay. So that led some people to think, well, maybe because she had written about that a couple days before she died and because it looked on the elevator footage as though she was talking to somebody, yeah. <laughs> maybe it was some of this top secret kind of shit and they killed her because of that, yeah, or yeah. Some, which sounds a little far-fetched, yeah, I'm going to say. And like I said, it wasn't top secret because it's all over the damn internet yeah, right, that they yeah. invented in business. Top secret, everybody knows about it. Everybody knows about it. Just yeah. look on YouTube. Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> I don't, and, and that, it's funny because it seems to come about a lot, like a lot of these kind of YouTube channels are like, stuff. Yeah. They don't want you to know. I'm like, if they didn't want you to know, you wouldn't know. Yeah. They're all on Google and hate Russian secret weapons. You know? Right. It's like, if it's on Google or YouTube, it's it like, secret. they don't care if you yeah. know or not. It's just, just a tip. I'm yeah. just saying. There were also some kind of weird things, but I don't want to go too much into these crazy conspiracy theories because I don't right. think there's anything to them. No. Some people made much of the fact that a few days after she died, there was a really bad... Uh, tuberculosis outbreak among the homeless uh, population right yeah. near there. And some people have made much of the fact that the test, the new test that has been established for testing for tuberculosis is weirdly called the LAM ELISA no, test. So go. I'm like, yeah, that's probably, that's a weird yeah. coincidence, yeah. sure, but that's probably just a coincidence. What did she have to do with tuberculosis? I don't know. Now, some people have also cited a uh, the weird history of the Cecil Hotel. Uh, very famously, the uh, the uh, Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, uh, mm -hmm. lived there for a time while he was uh, doing his murdering. There was another serial killer named Johann Unterweger who lived there and uh, actually killed three prostitutes while he lived there. There have been a series of weird suicides, people jumping yeah. out of windows. Uh, one woman who, she was actually a teenager, she was staying there with her boyfriend. Evidently, she did not know she was pregnant, went into the bathroom, gave birth to a baby boy, thought it was dead, and threw it out the window. This was in the 40s. There was also a woman... I ain't buying that. There was also... No, I'm saying that was in the 1940s. That was, yeah, I know that, yeah. but I, I, how could you not know you were pregnant? I've often wondered that. Maybe she, was, could, maybe she was really fat. She's true, yeah. Because I've seen that before, like people that didn't know they were pregnant. I'm like, yeah. I, I guess if you're kind of fat... And, and you're like, oh, this is dead. I'm going to throw it out the window. Why would you throw it out the window? Crazy shit. Bro. That is pretty crazy. Like, why is that the first thing you would think of? It seems really weird to me. I don't know. But anyway, so, um, you know, there's been a lot of others. So, like, one woman uh, jumped out a window to her and then, you know, to commit suicide yeah. and killed a passerby down the street, too. Yeah, landed on him. Huh? Yeah, landed on him. Oh, that sucked. And one yeah. woman jumped out of a window and landed so, on him. So, it ended up being a murder-suicide. <laughs> yeah, I know. Unintentionally. I know. It's horrible. But, so, there's there's been all of that kind of shit going on. So, now people are like, yeah, it's haunted and all this other kind of shit. Oh, also, it was supposedly, and I don't know if this is true, but supposedly it was the last person where the, the last place where the Black Dahlia was seen alive before her body was found. Uh, we are going to do a show on the Black Dahlia. So yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody in the comment section was asking about that. That, yeah, that we, was the case I was thinking about. Somebody yeah. was like, hey man, do Black Dahlia. We are going to do, we are gonna do We're going to do Black Dahlia, dude. Chill, chill. Because that was actually, that was in my book, Faceless Film. That we'll is do a, it. That's a huge, huge case. There's so many Yeah, that's the problem stuff. with it. It takes yeah. a lot of research. It does. But I researched it for my book, so I'm pretty up on that. Okay. You know, and there's even some shit about Anton LaVey, satanic cults, and all this all other right. kind of stuff. Now, the thing about that, yes, a lot of bad shit happened at the Cecil. Now, yeah. it's, you know, it's kind of a flop house. It attracts kind of shady characters and always kind of has. But the thing is, that may every not necessarily be a bad thing. Though. Well, <laughs> depending on where you stand on it. What do you but, think? Well, happened? but the thing is, too, that pretty much all the hotels in downtown Los Angeles They're have all had shady. similar yeah. things happen. They've all had murders. They've all yeah. had suicides. They've all. So I don't think the Cecil is there long any worse. If a building is there long enough, some bad shit's going to happen in it. That's yeah. just how it is. And now it should be noted, too, that American Horror Story, the TV show, uh, the I think it was season five that was yeah. Horror Hotel, is actually based on this particular hotel. And it act, But it actually got way more famous after Elisa Lamb got killed. Okay. So what do... Now, here's the thing. I'm kind of on the fence. Okay. I either think... I don't think that she committed suicide because here's the thing. I don't think so either. I don't think she was particularly suicidal. She nah. seemed to have plans for the future. She didn't yeah. really seem to be planning that. 
And if you were going to commit suicide at any rate, there are easier ways to do it. She could have just jumped off the roof, yeah. uh, which many people have done from yeah. that particular hotel. I don't know why you would go to all the trouble of killing yourself in that particular way. Because it, it's kind of not an easy way to go about things. I'm just saying. Yeah. So I don't think it was suicide. However, I'm kind of in the middle between maybe it was an accident. Like maybe she had a manic episode. Maybe she had taken some kind of drug that didn't stay in her system yeah. that maybe uh, reacted strangely with her regular medication, or maybe she had never taken it before and didn't know how she was going to react. And maybe that made her accidentally, you know, not really know what she was doing, yeah. climb up to the roof and stuff like that. There's a possibility she could have been murdered, but I don't know. There's only a couple little details that I think would maybe support that, and I think they could probably be explained by other things. All right. You want to know what I think? Yeah. Okay, the murder thing. If a guy's going to abduct her and murder her, usually the motive is going to be rape. Yeah. There's no signs of that, and you wouldn't. Take, well, this, you wouldn't take her to the yeah. to the roof. Well, and the her. thing too, I mean, like I said, there's possibility she could have been raped. Nobody actually knows if they did a rape kit on her. I or think not. it's unlikely. I think but, it's unlikely. Yeah. Be just because of the location, they found her in the damn water tower. Basically, yeah. the guy's not going to rape her there. The guy's going to rape her in a, in a place where there's semi privacy, and there's going to be damage to the body. You know what I mean? He's going to strangle her to death or bludgeon her to death, maybe shoot her. They just found her in, in, in the water cistern, basically. Yeah. And I don't really think it was just, uh, it, it could have been suicide. If it was suicide, she would have jumped, just like you said. That's well, Yeah, there are easier ways to do that. What I think it was, even in my inebriated state right now, okay? <laughs> yeah, I his mason that, jar is empty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I what I think it was, was a drug-related accident. I think she uh, became, she went baby sass. You ever see Tenacious D, the movie? <laughs> yeah. D, you eat a mushroom and all of a sudden you're baby sass and you're talking to Sasquatch. Yeah. She got a hold of something, you know, DMT, LSD. Something that wouldn't stay in your system. Something though, because they didn't some, find anything. Yeah, something that, you know what I mean, they wouldn't really detect. She starts tripping out. She goes up, you know, she's playing around in the elevators. She goes up to the top of the roof. She's uh, playing around. She sees a uh, open Yeah, maybe the top hatch. of the cistern was open. Because there are four of them. I don't right. know if you know, but they have She's looking lids. down. She goes, all oh, the water. Boy, that looks good. I'm going to go in there and, get, you know, take a swim. She jumps in. Everything's cool. She swims around. Realizes that she can't get back out. Yeah, because the tank was only about half full or a little yeah. over half full. So when you jumped in, you wouldn't have been able to reach to the hatch. To reach the hatch. To get out. And you can't reach the bottom. Yeah, because so there be, there's big, and I'll put pictures of the yeah. YouTube video. There's lots of pictures of these four tanks. So she was TV. trapped there, yeah. treading water, okay? She couldn't get out. Yeah. They found her clothes at the bottom of yeah, the Yeah, her system. clothes, her shoes, and her watch were in the tank with her. Yeah. But she was naked. Yeah. Well, I think what happened was is as she's treading water, she's taking clothes off. Maybe. To try to keep her to keep herself lighter. Yeah. And she's also tripping. Yeah. And eventually now, she see, just she just succumbs to it. I wouldn't know anything about tripping. I wouldn't know anything about Of course not. LSD or DMT. Neither would I. I don't I, really know. I would know nothing about that. But you know what I mean? Sometimes <laughs> I have heard that I've heard from I've other heard people. From other not people me. that sometimes you might see a situation and go, Man, that looks like an awesome idea. I think I might just... Because like you said, that yeah. is one thing. I don't know if you guys know, but yeah. It, yeah. Um, when, yeah, you're always kind of... Whatever's like, kind of happening in front of your face, you're like, you're yeah. Like, yeah, that's like a good that's idea. That's a good idea. I'm going to do good that. Idea. I think I'm going to take... I'm going to do that. I'm going to siphon the gasoline out of my car using a vacuum cleaner. You know what I mean? What a good idea. That's like a really good <laughs> idea. <laughs> Whoa, it caught fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, that was you know unexpected. I mean? Yeah, so... I think she, I I don't think there was any kind of foul play. I don't think it was a suicide, drug induced accident. That's what I'm. Prob I kind of leaning toward that as well. I saw her in the video. Yeah. Playing around, looking at the ghosts and shit. That bitch is tripping. They asked me kind of that bitch is like, tripping. It did kind of seem like that. Yeah, she's having fun. I mean, tripping. unless now, okay, now it should be noted. This is what I heard, and I've heard this on a couple different documentaries, and a couple different sources have said this. Yeah. The very famous elevator video of her is actually, one, it's been slowed down from 20 frames per second, which the original is, to 15 frames per second. The little timestamp has kind of been rubbed out, yeah. sort of, but people have determined that one minute of that footage is missing. Now, it could be that there was something uncomfortable with an employee. 
That's maybe what I'm thinking because yeah. the the video this was the video that the LAPD released had one right. minute missing and had been slowed down. Could be explained. that an employee didn't do their job properly. They weren't making a round. You know what I mean? Like they had to do certain things at certain times, or they did something on the tape that could have got themselves in trouble, having nothing to do with this woman. And so they wanted to take that out and then stretch it a little bit. You know, like maybe they stole something. Maybe they, you know, yeah, stole it, something yeah, it could have been something unrelated that. to something her. totally unrelated. I mean, yeah, I can see why people would think that was nefarious because right. you know this is the last footage right. of this girl and then they found her dead and then there's a minute missing so yeah i can see why that yeah there might have been an employee who stole something from the but hotel. there might have been a completely mundane explanation yeah, maybe a, i don't know be. you know like you said the only reason i thought maybe it was murder was because all of her clothes like i said she was found naked her clothes were found in the tank with her yeah now the clothes apparently had what it was called uh from the police report quote unquote a sand like particulate which they think was from the gravel on the roof of the hotel. Yeah, but that could have gotten means, there before she was right, in there. Which means, though, that she took her clothes off and put them on the ground and then picked them up again, climbed up to the water tower. And as far as I know, well, no, 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 there's no water tower, there's no ladder built into the water tower. Oh, no, no, of course not. That's why she couldn't get out. You have to bring. Right. So. I don't but know. But it could have been that workmen were on the top of the water tower and kicked sand into it years ago. Yeah, that could be too. Okay, so they, And you know. the other thing too was that the, the tank that they found her body in, yeah. the hatch of it was closed. Right. Now there's no way that she could have jumped in there and closed it herself because the water, as I said, was only about yeah, halfway she, so she couldn't have reached. She, but like you said. She may have opened it herself and then yeah. days later somebody that worked for the saw hotel that saw open, that it was open and closed it. Without without looking, without in looking in so it. that could have been right but i don't think like i said it could have been that it was open when she went up there and then it she looked been. down in there and saw the water she goes i'm gonna take a swim and then jumped in i'm gonna go in there and party with baby sass she jumps in it had and to she be has something a, like that and she has a great time and then she's like okay it's time to come out of the water and like and oh she shit couldn't get i out. can't wait yeah, yeah there's no way out which is horrible that's oh, horrifying yeah. Yeah, but you know what I mean? That's better than having somebody murder you. Yeah, I guess you know so. I, mean? I think it was an accident. I kind of am leaning toward that, too. I really do not think... I You know, much has been made of, oh, she had bipolar disorder. She suffered from depression and stuff like that. But from everything I've read, all the stuff I read about her blog, about other people that had talked to her just prior to when she was killed, yeah. she did not seem suicidal. She no. seemed to be like she was planning for the future, that she was a lot more optimistic. She, met, she must have met some people that were hanging out in the hotel. They or might something. have dosed her. They could and have dosed her. she didn't her. know. Could be, or it may have just been they were cool people, and uh, one thing, and they gave her a free hit of acid or some DMT or something. And, and on, she had never done it before. She never really done or it. Or interacted weirdly interacted with her with other medication like because she had been taking her medication. Like that I was said, the show is something. about you look at the evidence and then you're kind of reading into the evidence. Yeah. Oh, it must have been something terrible. But it was probably something that had you been there, had you saw it happen, you go, well, of course. So yeah. It have been something kind of mundane. Yeah. Because you know? I, it's funny because I think a lot of the mystery from this, uh, kind of like the, the Lighthouse case was from details that were actually incorrect. Because I think at first, yeah. when this first uh, came out, you know, and the video went viral and everything like that, people made a lot of the fact that, oh, there's no way she could have gotten onto the roof because all the doors were locked and all this other yeah. stuff. But later on that year, another a Chinese guy went to that hotel. He was interested in the case. So he's like, well, I'm going to go and stay in that hotel and I'm going to see if I can get up on the roof Probably and get into right. the water tank. And he went Easy. right out the fire exit went and right up roof. onto the roof. Yeah. And he's like, not only can you get on the yeah. roof without anyone bothering you, you could get to the water tanks without anyone bothering He's like, no one stopped me. He videotaped the whole thing. It's on YouTube. I, I just saw the video of it when it happened. And I was looking at it and hearing about the case. And I was going, man, she's tripping. She she's, does look like... I'm looking at her and go like, yeah. Like I said, tripping. at first, it doesn't look like she's tripping. Yeah. Like, it just kind of looks like, why isn't the elevator door closing? And she's yeah. like pushing them, trying to get it to close. But then after that, like she goes outside and she she's like articulating. And yeah, and she's like he's talking to people. She's talking to ghosts and sidestepping and backing up and doing all. She's doing the shit that you do when you're tripping. Yeah, it does look yeah. like that. 
I also want to mention too, just because I think this is amusing. Some people have said, and I don't know, I you yeah. know, I've never been to Korea. You have. Yeah. But this is a long time year. ago. Yeah. But evidently there's a thing called the Korean elevator game. Oh god. This must be from some movie or something like that. Oh, and oh, and speaking of movies, don't let me forget this. Some white I boy this made this shit up. They probably did, like yeah. just to go. It's yeah, Korean eviden- elevator game. Evidently the Korean elevator, she's not even Korean. No. She was born in Canada. Her parents yeah. were Chinese. Yeah. So evidently the Korean elevator game, you get an elevator, you have it has to be the hotel has to have, I think it's at least 15 floors for some reason. I don't know. And uh, so you get in the elevator, you push, I don't know if you push all the buttons or if you push a particular uh, sequence of buttons. I don't know, but you push a whole bunch of buttons and evidently this woman comes who's from another dimension and she takes you to another dimension, which mm-hmm. is kind of like this dimension, except dark and there's nothing right, there. Right. And then there's like a red cross. It's like and the mirror sudden, universe. It's, yeah, it's like the mirror universe. <laughs> so they said, well, maybe she decided she got high and she decided she was going to play the elevator game for whatever reason. I don't even know if that's a real thing or if somebody just made it up. They made that shit this. up, man. But I have to say, speaking of movies, yeah, this to me is the creepiest detail because if you guys saw the movie dark water now there was a uh there was a japanese version that hideo uh, nakata directed and then they did an american re- remake with jennifer connelly in 2002 the plot of that fucking movie is pretty much exactly the same as what happened to her there's like it's an apartment building not mm-hmm. a hotel but this woman and her daughter live in this apartment building and all of a sudden it's like all the buildings are flooded. There's all this nasty, gross water and everything like that. And it turns out in the end, spoiler alert, that there's a dead body in one of the water tanks on the roof. Yeah. It's like exactly the same. And so a lot of people, I mean, I don't know if anyone has come up with any like theory as to why that could be, but it does seem pretty weird that this real life story like mirrored no, this movie no, from is. like a long time ago. No, it is no, not. No, that's weird to me. It's pure statistics. It There's is, yeah, but it's still weird. There's a lot of water weird. tanks but it's on still the weird. roofs of buildings. It's only a matter of time before some motherfucker jumps in there and dies. And apparently, and I'm you only... you can't get out of one of those. Well, yeah, I know, because they're very large. <laughs> they ought to make a law that has a... to make people fabricate a ladder that goes from the hatch or the lid all the way down to the bottom. So you can get so out. So you would be able to get out. So well, it's just like they did with car trunks. But here's the before, thing. You, yeah. you know, where you couldn't get out and you now can you out. can get out because so many people were getting the problem locked is, up in there. The problem is, if you passed a law to put a ladder on all those water tanks, chances are motherfuckers would be jumping down into the water tank to, to fucking swim in the damn drinking water. Probably. And you know when they go in there, they're going to be pissing in the water. Well, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. of course they'd take a shit because yeah. people are assholes like yeah. that. Yeah, so maybe it's better to keep the ladders out of it there. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all in water. favor of like, you know, I, like I said, it's horrible what happened to her, but yeah. in a sense... I mean, that was a pretty much a freak accident. They always make a law to lock the tops of those damn water things. They, You know you what? They them. might have been supposed to be locked and maybe they weren't. Yeah. So I think that maybe that might have been part of why uh, her parents sued the hotel because right. maybe they thought it was negligent been or something there. like that. But like I said, they lost because they said, well, there's no way that we could have suspected that anyone would climb all the way up to the yeah. roof and then climb into the water tank because that's not usually something that people would do. Um, evidently, according to Elisa, the documentary, there have been two other cases one was in Kuala Lumpur in 2015. I don't remember when the other one was, where a similar kind of thing happened. I don't remember if there were hotels or apartment buildings, but same kind of thing, like the water supply went all yucky, and then they went up and they found a dead body in one of yeah. the water tanks. And they don't know, like, they didn't appear to be any sign of violence. They don't know if people just jumped in there, or they just fell in by accident or what. But I do kind of feel like this was probably a drug-induced accident. Yeah, I think it's... This I one, don't yeah. know what the reason was, why she particularly went to the roof in the first place. But from looking at the elevator footage, it does seem like she was on yeah. something. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And when you're tripping, you know, yeah. some things that are probably stupid ideas seem like They seem like really good, good ideas, ideas at the time, yeah. You're like, yeah. you know. Baby sass. I'm baby you're sass. Sh- you're my, you're that kind of happens daddy. when you're drunk, too. It's like, yeah. shit seems like a good idea. And then you're the right, next yeah. day, you're like, wow, that was really not a good idea. Right. But yes. <laughs> so I think the same kind of thing applies. Right. Like I said, it's it's terrible. And, you know, it's terrible what happened to her. But yeah. I don't think they're... Yeah, like, but to the parents, well, I don't think it was fair. I don't think it was uh, I, suicide. Yeah. And I don't think it was foul play. Yeah. I think and, it was and again, like murder, I, I think it would be too much trouble for somebody to kind of drag her all the way up there and then yeah. drag her and drop You know, that would... Well, if a Be guy's gonna if a guy's gonna rape her, a murderer, he's gonna want privacy. So he would have taken her to one of the little rooms, uh. and then 
spirited her, spirited her dead body out of there in a different way. He wouldn't put it into his own water supply. Yeah, that does seem a little counterproductive. Yeah, right. All right, so uh, we went a little bit long again because we're yeah kind of hammered. You more than me because holy crap, he went on, through a I whole feel... entire mason jar. Yeah, <laughs> that was like a triple. It was, that yeah. Was I have a double, but I haven't finished it yet. So be. I'm only... Don't worry, I'm going to make more. Uh, okay, good. Because <laughs> it's only Friday. I'm out of here, bro. We have a long night ahead I'm of us. Out of here. So we hope you enjoyed episode 83 about creepy unsolved mysteries, which probably aren't as mysterious as they seem. And remember, if you like the show, to like, share, subscribe, and share on all your social media. Tell all your friends and all that other kind of good stuff. Uh, if you'd like to support the show financially, you can go to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash 13 o'clock. Or if you don't like Patreon, you can go to our blog, which is 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com. And there's a link in the sidebar to a PayPal account. Also, uh, you can check out our store at zazzle.com slash 13 o'clock. And we have t-shirts and some, and a tote bag. Um, I just sent out tote bags to all our $20 plus patrons. So you should be getting those soon. Look out for a package from Zazzle. Cause I just drop shipped them th- from there and you should be getting them soon. And also remember to check out, uh, my book, the faceless villain, check out our last movie review, which was Saturn three. If you haven't watched it yet, and that'll do it for episode 83. See you next time. Bye. Flannan Isles in the south by the point of Kerjury 47 miles from land in the roughest part of the sea oh, oh, oh. And the finest day of the sea is black 